Hi, I'm Chris from Wild Beast. Hi, I'm Tom, and you're watching What I Love. I remember, um, I think perhaps if I was going to pick a record that was most important to me actually wanting to become a musician, I'd probably say um, uh, when I was about 15, I picked up um, Trap Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, and um, it completely blew apart every th notion of what I thought m music was and how it was constructed to that point. So I think. Um, in terms of like the most important record I've ever bought, I think that's probably it. Uh, I think for me it was probably The Queen Is Dead by The Smiths. Um, I think up until that point when I heard it, I was probably about 16, 17, maybe a little bit older, probably 17, 18, and I've been probably guilty of listening to music quite passively and not really listening to what was being said or uh, certainly what was being done in music. So um, yeah, it would be The Smiths. I think um, as a um, most important band for me personally has probably been um, over the course of their career. I'd probably say my, uh, Swans. I know they don't sound much like our band, but um, the way um, the sort of breadth of the music they made and the different guises it took on, and um, uh, Jira's constant vision of what he does is like is just amazing for me. And like he continues to make great records, even though he's pushing sixty now. Yeah, I think probably the most important band for me, uh, I'd say in the last few years it's probably been The National, because I, I think we kind of, well I kind of look to them as inspiration for not not worrying about a, a career trajectory as much, and they were making records long before people were getting, uh, before they became as popular as they are now. Uh, so I think just to, to almost take heart from that you can do what you want to do, and be consistent with it and not worry and not having to conform, it would, it would probably be the national. Um, I do. I am, um, yeah. Um, my first record I bought personally with my own money, safe pocket money, I think I was about eight years old, and I bought um, uh, Take That and Party, which is Take That's first record on cassette from a chain called Toys R Us in a, town, in a small industrial town called Leyland, Lancashire. So um, it's probably informed my career ever since. I can remember the first single I ever bought was Spice Girls Wannabe. Uh, that was just huge. I would have been <laughs> seven or eight at the time and I just heard this song and, we, and really, really loved it. I wanted to buy it, saw the video, thought it was great. So it's Spice Girls. The actual first album I bought, and I, I, I'm relatively proud of this as a, I'm trying to think how old I would have been, probably 10 or 11, and it was Blur The Great Escape. I don't, I, I, I don't think that's too bad a start. That could be a lot worse. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I still, that, that, that album maybe hasn't as aged as well as some of the later records, but I, I still stand by it being a good pop record, so, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, a record, I, there's um, quite a few records I have, have come out this year that I haven't got yet. Um, there's a band called Adult Jazz, who I really like, which I, I really want to get that record. Um, I wanted to buy the FKA Twigs record, again, oh God. Um, there's loads, I mean, obviously, there's always loads of old ones I should have bought and I haven't yet as well, but they're the two I've been thinking about spending some money on recently. Yeah, I'll uh, second Tom on, on adult jazz. I was actually kindly given the record, uh, but I, oh. you do, I, I do feel like you've got to go and uh, support this sort of music and buy it yourself, so I need to go and buy that. Uh, it's a great record. It's, uh, it's quite schizophrenic and goes off on different tangents, but it, it's, I think it'll be, it'll be quite a big year for them this year, so yeah, I'd say adult jazz. It's normally the latest Katy Perry song that's the most catchiest <laughs> tune, I think, going. And they, they are undeniable, these huge, big budget, written by 12 different people songs, but I mean, they, they, they're, always, um, they're always at the forefront of your mind, or well, at the back of your mind anyway, and you just it suddenly just pops into your head halfway, halfway through the day. So yeah, probably Raw by Katy Perry for me. But. <laughs> well, I don't even know, I don't even know like, what they're called, but there's, driving across Germany and, and continental Europe in general, like, there's always, always dance music on the radio, and there's always, I don't know where they find them, but there must be a, a factory that kind of um, pumps out all these, like, girls who sing on house tracks, and, like, there's always, like, there's always a line just like, yeah, I can't, I didn't like that at the time, but I can't stop singing it, and it's, it's just count, it, it seems to be a new one each day. I, I love it. Oh, we've already, we've already promoted adult jazz very much, who we really, really love. Um, as, a, as a new band, as a young band out of um, Leeds, where we came up as a band as well, I think um, they are, well, I mean, they're like 20 years old and I'm nearly 30, and they're, they're making us feel old, you know what I mean? It starts to feel like, um, I don't know, you start to realise that, you know, there's a lot happening. Yeah. We had uh, mutual benefit supporters in the US, um, 
yeah, I think we're yeah we're, we're all pretty stoked to have him along with us and and his and his band, and they were they were really sweet to tour with. Uh, so yeah, I think it will be mutual benefit. Yeah, kind of already been there, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, no, all, 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 I mean, no, I don't think you should be guilty about any pleasure. But I like um, I like we didn't talk, listen to a lot of um, uh, metal, like old metal, and especially like like power metal. I'm talking like Iron Maiden, Halloween, like those kind of bands, you know, all kind of, all the kind of like Dungeons and Dragons shit. Like, I'd, it's un, it's it's great. I mean, it is great. It's unavoidable. And um, yeah, sometimes you just need sometimes you just need that in your life. Actually, in the last 24 hours, 24, 36 hours, there has been uh, yeah a Dungeons and Dragons style band designed by Tom and our uh, yeah. and, and one of our uh, backline technicians. What what are you called? Oh, we're going to call it Highwaymen. Highwaymen. Yeah. Highwayman. Highway, hi, Highwayman. Highwayman. Sorry. Yeah. It's, uh, they've been doing impressions and like singing of wars past and uh, <laughs> dragons and battles lions and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Wars, yeah. yeah. So I don't. I don't know if that would translate that well to a German audience, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. You, 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 well, it already sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I think the Tyler Creator uh, Yonkers video was quite something when it yeah. came out. I think we all watched that. as like, well, yeah, this is a. Because you're always striving to make that that perfect video, and when you've got four people, maybe not necessarily all pulling in the right direction, because we are pretty we're pretty strong ideaed and we're also you're quite wary about giving too much away visually, and and maybe we we're not the best at making videos. But um, I think when we saw that video, it was like, yeah, that's a, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Of all time, oh man. Um, yeah, um, the first track on Hats by the Blue Niles is a song called Over the Hillside, which is absolutely, it's sort of like tear in the eye every time. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's um, whenever you need, you're feeling homesick or you need to be kind of, you need to be transported, that's kind of where I go. Uh, I'd probably go for the Rainbow, Talk Talk on Spirit of Eden. Uh, it's just a beautiful way to open a record. It was a, quite, quite a statement of intent and quite a departure for them, what they did with that record. Uh, and it's just the way it's, I think it's like seven or eight minutes long, but it just, it kind of falls, just everything starts to fall into place with it and then it just like collapses under its own beauty. And there's just a big, there's a big string swell and it's just absolutely gorgeous when it gets to the chorus. So yeah, it'll be uh, the rainbow for me.